People tell you lots of shit when you grow up like I did. Maybe they say, you're no good. You're a criminal. You're a goddamn lazy shit ass that will never, ever amount to anything in life. They say, I know you better than you know yourself. Fuck. Fuck. You don't know. I never walked my fucking shoes. Nobody ever truly knows anyone! At least that's what I think. And more people said about me, the harder I worked to prove them wrong. This is my fist. What people say about you can either drive you or kill you. I let it drive me. Two of my brothers let it kill them. see somebody die in front of you? Did you ever watch somebody take their last breath as you held them in your arms? Real man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A boxer. Boxer! Boxer! You're funny, you know? But the sport that actually pays you to beat somebody up. I mean, if you're not even a ring on the street, you get arrested. That's what a problem you realize you make money by knocking people out. It just feeds that drive that's already there. And the funny thing is, the minute you step out of the ring, you're expected to just turn it off to become a civil. To be a good person in society. But you see, it's a catch-22. Because the minute you turn it off, it being that anger and rage, the minute you turn it off and forget about where you come from, you're done. You lose. Because it's that anger and rage which drives you to continue beating the shit out of people. If you get too comfortable in your new, plush, rich lifestyle, there's some young kid in the slum somewhere who doesn't have what you do. Out just like you once did. He's willing to do anything. Anything. He has to. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, fight night, the big night. My dressing room is like a fucking morgue. I remember when I was like, I got my fist taped, it was eerily quiet. No PK, no spells, no Jimmy Smith. The only one that had anything to say was come here. It was all jolly and shit. I mean, what the fuck did he care, you see? He was making his money either way. He held the rights the guy was about to fight. He had them. Either way, come here was coming out on top. I remember the last thing he said to me before he left my locker room? He leaned down on my face, just like the first time when I met him, as I got my fist taped, and he said, Son! He's gonna run from you. Hunt his ass down and tear his ass up. Give him what they came here for and knock his ass out. Give him a good show. Then he stood up with that silly ass grin of his and said, Sledgehammer hands! Sledgehammer hands! 30 minutes till showtime! And he turned and limped his ass out of my locker room, followed by all the leeches. I remember my trainer who was taping my fist at the time didn't say a word. He just looked up under his eyebrows. His expression was like, can you believe that fucking asshole? Hmm. Nothing was said. Pre-fight pretty much goes like this. You get your fist taped with somebody from the other guy's corner and a boxing official look on to make sure you don't do anything illegal. At some point in time, the referee comes in and goes over the rules with you. You go over all the rules before you get in the ring. Next. You shadow box a little. Get a sweat going on. Then it's time to put your gloves on. Once your gloves are on, you work on the pads a little bit. Work on a few combinations. Get pumped up. Stay focused. Stay relaxed. You're nervous as fuck. Anybody that tells you differently is full of shit. 
You're going out in front of thousands of people, thousands of people to fight, fighting, boxing. It's the most manly of man sports. You can't lose. If you lose, you'll be nothing. It's your manhood. It's your fucking manhood. Relax. Fucking relax. Relax. The challenger always goes to the ring first. I remember my mouth was so dry. I kept trying to take little sips of water without anybody noticing because you don't want them to know that you're nervous, but you know that they know that you're nervous. I step out of the locker room. I hear the noise, the crowd, the rumble of sound. I stand behind the door of a little entourage waiting to hear my entrance music. Relax. Focus. Focus. I got a job to do. And then I hear it. When you were young, and your heart was like an open door. They used to say, you know that live. You know they did, you know they did, you know they did. But if this ever-changing world in which we live in makes you give and and cry, but I know, say live and let die. The door's open. A wall of hot air smacks me in the face of the end of the arena. I always walked out to live in the dot because to me, this was life or death. I try and stay focused, eyes on the ring or the ground in front of me. Focus, block out all sound, I got a job to do. I make my way to the ring, and once inside, I dance around a little, try to keep warm as I wait for the champ to enter. You see, the champ can make you wait, try to psych you out, hope that you cool down. And as I wait, I allow myself to look into the crowd. And all I see are the first couple rows. And there they are. Just like in the beginning, all the rich kids dressed in their fine suits and fur coats, hands covered with diamonds and gold, laughing and joking as they wait in anticipation, waiting to see the two poor bastards beat the shit out of each other for their entertainment. And then the crowd roars. And in walks the champ. He comes walking out the Danny Boy. The rap version of Danny Boy. That was my mom's favorite song, motherfucker, piss my ass off. He makes his way to the ring. We both take off our robes. And the ref calls us to the center. He says, you both know the rules, blah, blah, blah. The only thing you hear at that moment is your heart pounding in your chest. Finally, he says, gentlemen, Gentlemen. Gentlemen, touch gloves. And when you hear the bell, come out fighting. Touch gloves. Touch gloves, Sullivan. I walk back to my corner. I take one last sip of water before I put my mouthpiece in. And then I turn and wait for what seems like eternity for the bell to ring. I'm going at him. I know I can hurt him. I see fear in his eyes. Bell rings, round one. At that moment, everything slows down. I hear nothing. All I see is him. He comes right at me and there's a left, right. That's like fucking crazy. Coming to me like he can knock me out in the first round. First round, you fear you're pounding out. See how he moves. Take his shot. I took his shot. He's a little harder than I thought. But now it's my turn. And I love some beautiful hooks in the body. And I know they're good. Because every time I hit him, I can hear his breath. He moves backwards and dances away. Pierce I hurt him. I go after him. I catch up to him on the ropes. I slip under his jab. I dig a hook to the body. He drops his right hand. I let the hook fly. He lands square on the side of his head, just missing his chin. If I hit him in the chin right there, lights out, fight's over. Instead, he falls back on the ropes and covers up. I go right back to the body. I got him. He's hurt. I'm gonna knock his fucking ass up in the first round. The bell rings. End of round one. I walk back to my corner. I 
I know I heard him. I know I heard you, old man. Shadowboxing. Shadowboxing. Yeah, everybody one's own shadow, one's own self. When done properly, it's poetry in motion, a dance. To quote the greatest of all time, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, your hands can't hit, but your eyes can't see. Rumble, young man. Rumble. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was my hero growing up. He didn't ever want in life. Money. Money. Women, cars, a championship belt, but most of all, he had respect. You see, when you grow up like I did, respect is the most important thing in life. When you grow up like I did, well, well, hold on a minute. If I'm gonna tell you a little about my childhood, you need to know a little about boxing. I read somewhere that boxing originated from fencing. And to me that makes sense, you know, it, it's, it's pretty much the same stance, the uh, jab we equivalent to the, um, you know, whatever the fuck they call that thing in fencing, and the object to outpoint your opponent, or end it for him. The way I see it, I can just imagine a couple really poor kids watching the rich kids fence. And these poor kids, they want so much to be able to fence, but there's no way they can afford the equipment. So instead, they use their imagination and pretend to fence. And the one day, the one poor kid lunges forward and accidentally hits the other kid in the, in the face with his closed fist instead of his imaginary sword. But that kid, he gets angry and punches him in the face. And next thing you know, they're going at it. And the rich kids look down and see the poor kids beating the shit out of each other. And they come running down the hill to watch because you see, the rich kids love to watch the poor kids beat the fuck out of one another. Thus, the sport of boxing. I mean, that pretty much sounds like the sport, right? Two poor kids who have absolutely nothing beating the shit out of each other in order to entertain the rich. There's more to it than that. For the poor kid, the boxer. There's the idea of someday being able to have everything that rich kid has. A home, clean clothes, food, a car. A car he hasn't stolen. A family. To have a family is respected. To be respected by people other than your friends. Whom? Most of your friends. Because of what you can do with your fist. I went into boxing with the idea of someday having a life. A life. Other than this fucking nightmare. Fighting was always easy for me. I was the youngest of five boys. I pretty much fought every day of my life growing up. At home, on the playground, at school, when I was there, pretty much everywhere. And my brothers and I, we couldn't afford boxing gloves, no. Instead, we would put on winter mittens and go at it like they were gloves. It's funny, you know, I remember I used to think there was some padding in those mittens. Find a kid who doesn't have much, and you'll find a kid with a great imagination. When I was about seven or eight, we got boxing gloves for Christmas. One pair. That was the gift for all five of us. And because I was the youngest, I was always given the left-handed glove. You see, all my brothers were righties, so they'd take that right-handed glove and just sit there and pound away on me. We'd hold fights in the alleyway across the street. We'd stack up a bunch of boxes and make a little ring. One day, I was in the center of the ring, and my brother Keith was just sitting there pounding away on me. And I was covering up because I'd seen Muhammad Ali do it on my aunt's TV. And finally, I got sick and tired of hearing him laughing as he beat on me. So I pivoted. And with everything I had, I threw to this day the most beautiful left hook I've ever thrown in my life. Remember I watched as my fist landed squarely on his laughing face. And suddenly, he staggered backwards and dropped into some boxes. out. I knocked his ass out.
power. Respect. That brother never, ever fucked with me again. And from that day on, my life had turned. I knew what I had to do in order to gain people's respect. That's when I became a fighter.